Jim Hansen, the NASA scientist, was, you know, made claims that this represented a potential two degree shift and that it was a climate changer. And so this, it's important to understand that that report that industry and the Harper government blindly ran into and waved all around and said that, see the tar sands aren't that bad, they're, 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 they're ethical. You know, the reality of it is, is that report was very siloed. It did not take into calculation the natural gas that's burnt to produce the tar sands. It did not have a full life cycle analysis in, in certain aspects of it. There were a lot of holes in it. Um, it was a very specific report to, that asked the question, you know, what would happen if you burnt all the coal, all the oil, all the gas, and what would each specific form of fossil fuel, uh, what would that equate to in terms of global uh, climate degree shifts? So there's a lot of great literature online. I encourage you to read about the Reaver report, um, you know, from both sides and make up your own mind on it, okay? And don't fall into the propaganda. Now, IEN, for the last six years, um, you know, we've been working primarily with Fort Chip One, but as I mentioned, there are other communities that have, you know, engaged on this issue, most notably the pipeline impacted communities like the five First Nations that are traveling on the Freedom Train right now across Canada. They're actually at the Forks in Winnipeg having a water ceremony as we speak, but they will be here on the 8th. Um, and I encourage you, uh, we have a friend from Rising Tide Toronto that will talk more about the actual AGM day and the actions planned for the 9th. But I will say that we've got a kick-ass concert at the Grand Hall. It's free. Bring your friends out. We've got some huge acts, including a tribe called Red, Kinney Star, and a bunch of others. So please do make sure you come out to that on the 8th. Keep that night free. But for us, you know, there's also... Uh, the Unistotan clan, the Wet'suwet'en nation that have risen up against the Enbridge Gateway Pipeline and other pipelines in their territory like the Pacific Natural Gas, Natural Trails Pipeline, which is a feedstock, an energy stock for tar sands. Um, you've got the Oglala and the Rosebud Sioux Nations and grassroots uh, members from Oweaku, like Deborah Whiteplume, who have stood in the way of massive equipment being shipped to Alberta through their territory for the purposes of building upgraders. In, Al in Alberta, refineries, who have stood in the way of these trucks going through their territories, and who have stood in the way of the Keystone XL pipeline, a proposal to build a million barrel per day or 900,000 barrel per day pipeline to the Gulf Coast, uh, uh, where there's a bunch of refineries um, that are equipped already to, to, uh, to produce tar sands. Um, you've got the Sack and Fox, you've got the Caddo Nation in Oklahoma, who have stood up because the proposed route of the Keystone XL pipeline will disturb burial grounds and 75 culturally significant sites, uh, including a mass burial ground of the Sac and Fox where hundreds of their tribal members were buried together as a result of dying from smallpox from blankets that the U.S. Cavalry gave them during the Trail of Tears when their tribe was relocated with 31 other tribes to the state of Oklahoma. You've got tribes that have stood up on the coast that are concerned about their salmon way of life and the marine mammals that they subsist upon. And they're concerned about, you know, the super tanker traffic that'll be coming into Kitimat. And those waters outside of Kitimat on our Pacific Northwest coast are known by the federal government as the most treacherous waters in Canada on our three coasts. And they want to bring 300 super tankers that take 10 miles just to stop. They want to bring those into these crazer fjords and ship tar sands fuel down to America and to Canada, I mean uh, China. You've got actions though that are being taken by local communities in the tar sands, like here at the Healing Walk in 2010, which was a prayer walk, not a protest, but really calling upon the ancestors to support the local tribes in that fight there in Fort McMurray. And again, in 2011, I encourage you all, for those of you that have the means to come and join us, for the Healing Walk in the second week of August in Fort McMurray uh, this year, which will be the third Healing Walk. <clears throat> You've got massive pipeline campaigns, including the Keystone XL pipeline campaign, which you know we were very successful in. Yes, TransCanada put in a new application for that pipeline just yesterday. Yes, President Obama approved the southern leg of that pipeline from Cushing, Oklahoma to Texas. But I will say this, Through 
grassroots organizing and through over a thousand people getting arrested in, in the largest act of civil disobedience in front of the White House that the White House had seen since the Vietnam War and through a subsequent action where 12,000 people joined hands around the White House four layers deep, we did sway the mind of the most powerful man in the world to deny the initial permit to the Keystone XL pipeline, which was a massive feat, you know? And that whole thing was led by Native Americans. <laughs> of course, we can't forget about the largest act of civil disobedience that the steps of parliament had seen, where over 200 people actually did get arrested. Police reported only on 100 and so, but that's because they got lazy. It was hot as hell that day. The cops were getting sunburned, and so they did a mass release of 86 arrestees at the end because they were too lazy to process them all. So, because it was a hot day. But you know, there, we had our own shit dig here in Canada as well. Again, led by First Nations people, with you know strong support from from Canadians from every background. And so here we are in 2012, you know, and where you have a growing international movement against the Canadian tar sands, but also against tar sands development all across the planet. Because it's not just in Canada where this type of oil exists. It exists in Trinidad and Tobago. It exists in the desert of Jordan. It exists in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It exists in Russia and Siberia. And so the reality of it is, is that we have a fundamental responsibility to stop this beast in its tracks, to stop it and its many tentacles in its tracks right here in Canada. Uh, because it's not just uh, 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 scheduled to be developed here. There are already uh, profit for technology trades happening between tar sands corporations like Suncor, uh, like Petro Canada, uh, Suncor, and Syncrude, and others, uh, you know, with countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo or Madagascar. Uh, and you know, these countries do not have uh, or recognize their indigenous populations. There are really severe governance and human rights issues in these places. And you know, already here in this country, we have a government that doesn't give a rat's ass about native people. And actually, I would argue, doesn't give a rat's ass about most Canadians at this point. <laughs> and so imagine how bad it will be in places like the Democratic Republic of Congo. And so we got a lot of work to do. And you know, I didn't talk about what's going on here in Eastern Canada, because we have Ron Plain here from Amjanong First Nation. But Enbridge, you know, Aside from their plan to build you know, the Enbridge Gateway Pipeline to link Asia markets to the tar sands, also has other plans here that Ron will talk about, that each and every one of you from here in Toronto can be a part of helping put a stop to. And so I want to thank you all for you know, inviting me by encouraging you to take action. You know, for those of you that got mucho dinero, you know, donate some money to First Nations. Um, you don't got money, but you've got two hands and some feet that can take you places, get involved in helping support actions that are happening all across the world against the tar sands today. Today is International Stop the Tar Sands Day. You know? Yeah. And so get involved in actions um, at a local level, most importantly, but you know, wherever you go. And uh, help us target, you know, the major infrastructure by targeting oil companies. Uh, you know, that are operating in the tar sands, doing brand damage. You know, Enbridge is very visible here in Ontario. They heat a lot of our homes. So we can hit up Enbridge here. Uh, target the banks that are financing the tar sands. The biggest financier is RBC. And there's many, many, many other things that you can do. If you come to our website, ienearth.org slash tarsands.html, you can get more information about how to get involved. Uh, you can follow me at Twitter, Clayton IEN. Add me on Skype, Monster Red Light, or send me an email at monsterredlight at gmail. Please join any one of our Facebook groups. We have a Canadian Indigenous Tar Sands Facebook group as well as a general IEN Facebook group with over 25,000 people on it now. So uh, thank you very much uh, for having me here, and I look forward to some questions later.